Hello! The video you're watching is the third of a three-part series about the short story The Feeling of Power by science fiction writer Isaac Asimov. This is an independent video, but to better understand the context, I recommend that you watch the first part in which I present the story plot and make a short review of it. And the second part of the series, which is about students cheating with calculators. In The Feeling of Power, Myron Obb, the man who rediscovered the principles of arithmetic, felt so despondent about the way his creation was being used that he decided to take his own life. In real life, we can see many examples of inventors having great misgivings about their creations that they may even regret having created them. And this is what we are going to see now. The current video is a compilation of three different articles, and you can check the websites on the description to see which inventors and creations didn't make the cut. So here we have 10 inventors who regretted their own creations. 10. Bob Probst, inventor of the office cubicle. While working as a consultant for Herman Miller in the 1960s, Bob Probst introduced America to the open plan office and with it the office cubicle. It was, he told the New York Times in 1997, designed to give knowledge workers a more flexible, fluid environment than the rat maze boxes of offices. Companies saw his invention as a way to save money, doing away with individual offices and replacing them with open plans and cubicles. Probst came to lament his invention. The cubiclizing of people in modern corporations is monolithic insanity, he said. 9. Victor Grun, creator of the shopping mall. Back when cities were smaller and more concentrated, everyone lived downtown, so everyone was close to all the shops. But as suburbs developed, it became harder and harder for people living outside the city core to shop. In 1954, Victor Green's solution first appeared in Detroit. It was meant to be a communal area where people could easily walk around and do all their shopping and other errands. It was meant to have green spaces, art, and other happy things. It was a shopping mall. It caught on like gangbusters. Then some smarty pants decided it would be even better if it was enclosed in a single building and if all the green spaces and art and pretty things were removed to make room for more stars, it became the shopping mall we know today. Groom, the father of the shopping mall, was appalled. In 1978, he said, I would like to take this opportunity to disclaim paternity once and for all. I refuse to pay alimony to those bastard developments. They destroyed our cities. He died in 1980, and perhaps mercifully, one can't help but wonder what he would have thought of things like Black Friday and online shopping. 8. Philo Farnsworth, inventor of the television. Philo Farnsworth was only 14 when he conceived of the television. He thought it would help people by enabling them to learn about each other and settle world problems. Farnsworth died in 1971, which was plenty long enough to see how his invention was really used. He died feeling that instead of learning and enriching their lives through it, People just wasted them watching it instead. He told his son, there's nothing worthwhile on it and we are not going to watch it in this household and I don't want it in your intellectual diet. 7. 
Wally Conron, creator of the Labradoodle. In the 1980s, Wally Conron, the puppy breeding manager for the Royal Guide Dog Association of Australia, was tasked with creating a non-shedding guide dog for a blind woman whose husband was allergic to dogs. The result was a cross between a golden Labrador retriever and a standard poodle called a Labradoodle, now the most sought-after hybrid dog in the world. You'd think Conron would be happy, right? Wrong. Everyone's now trying to create their own hybrid breeds. Golden Doodles, Golden Retriever Poodle, Schnoodles, Miniature Schnauzer Poodle, Cavoodles, Cavalier King Charles Spaniel Poodle, Rudels, Rottweiler Poodle, Yorkipus, Yorkshire Terrier Poodle, Shippus, Shih Tzu, Poodle. The result, according to Psychology Today, the Poodle crosses suffer various ailments, problems with their eyes, hips, elbows, even epilepsy. I opened a Pandora's box. That's what I did, Conroe told Psychology Today. So many people are just breeding for the money. So many of these dogs have physical problems. And a lot of them are just crazy. 6. Ethan Zuckerman, creator of the pop-up ad. Ethan Zuckerman says he had the best of intentions when he invented the pop-up ad back in the 1990s. The internet was still fairly nascent, but it was clear that the future was advertising. The pop-up was intended to put an ad on the screen without directly associating it with a specific page or its content. Zuckerman says that, We came up with it when a major car company freaked out that they bought a banner ad on a page that celebrated anal sex. I wrote the code to launch the window and ran an ad in it. Soon afterward, Joe Cities will use the cold, and uh, the rest is history. I'm sorry, says Zuckerman, our intentions were good. 5. Anna Jarvis, creator of Mother's Day. Anna Jarvis loved her mother, and she knew that other people did too but she didn't love how moms largely went unrecognized and unappreciated. So she set out to do something about it. And that's how Mother's Day came to be. The first one was in 1908 at her church. She chose white carnations as a symbol because they were her own mother's favorite flower. Jarvis was a virulent letter writer and she campaigned hard to promote the day. It caught on fast, and as quickly as 1914, the second Sunday in May was legislated to be Mother's Day. At the start, carnations were two for a penny. As quickly as four years later, they were 15 cents, and then the greeting card companies got involved, and the chocolatiers. Anna Jarvis was appalled. What had started as a day for sentiment had become a day for profit. She did an abrupt about face and turned her letter writing prowess against the beast she had unleashed. But it was too late. Mother's Day was here to stay. She died in 1948, still regretting her creation. She never had children and was not herself a mother. 4. John Sylvan, creator of the Curing K-Cup Coffee Capsules. John Sylvan hated the office coffee. More than anything, he hated having to dump most of it down the sink. So he thought, why not find a way to make good coffee one cup at a time? 
so he did. The curing coffee maker with its ubiquitous K-cup pots. And he sold billions of the things. But therein lies the problem. Those little pods are not recyclable. And they are not biodegradable. All they do is sit there in landfills for a long, 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 long time. Billions of them. Sylvan feels bad about it. And you know what? He doesn't even own a curing himself. 3. Alfred Nobel, inventor of the dynamite. The Nobel Peace Prize is given annually to the person who shall have done the most or the best work for fraternity between nations, the abolition or reduction of standing armies, and for the holding and promotion of peace congresses. The prize was created by Alfred Nobel, who made a fortune by inventing dynamite to help with his family's mining business. Trust the army to see the potential of such a destructive thing as a weapon. Dynamite cannons were introduced in the Spanish-American War, and dynamite proved as effective at blasting through the enemy as it was at blasting through the earth. Interestingly, Nobel didn't come out against its use as a weapon until he read his own obituary. In 1888, his brother Ludwig died, but the papers made a mistake and thought it was Alfred who had died. The obituary said that the merchant of death is dead and claimed that Nobel became rich by finding ways to kill more people faster than ever before. The Nobel Prize was established in Alfred Nobel's last will and testament in an effort to rehabilitate his own reputation. 2. Mikhail Kalashnikov, creator of the AK-47. The AK-47 is the world's most widely used assault rifle. It was invented by a Russian named Mikhail Kalashnikov, who based his design on the German STG-44 rifle that had done so much damage to his people during World War II. The Russians wanted their own devastating infantry rifle, and they got it. The AK-47 was a dream come true. It was cheap and easy to produce, and was sturdy and lightweight, and simple to maintain, making it effective to use. It was introduced in 1949 and is still in use all over the world today. Tens of millions of people have been killed or wounded by AK-47s. Before he died, Kalashnikov wrote letters to the Russian Orthodox Church asking if he was to blame for all those deaths. The pain in my soul is unbearable, he wrote. I keep asking myself the same unsolvable question. If my assault rifle took people's lives, that means that I, Mikhail Kalashnikov, am responsible for people's deaths. The longer I live, the more often that question gets into my brain. The deeper I go in my thoughts, and guesses about why the Almighty allowed humans to have devilish desires of envy, greed, and aggression. 1. Albert Einstein, whose theories helped create the atomic bomb. Einstein's famous equation. E equals MC square was the roadmap scientists needed to build the atomic bomb. And assuming that the Nazis were well on their way to building their own A bomb, he was glad to help, even writing a letter to President Franklin Roosevelt in 1939 urging him to pursue the bomb. But the destruction of Hiroshima and Nagasaki horrified Einstein. In 1947, he lamented to Newsweek that if he had 
known that the Germans would not succeed in developing an atomic bomb, I would have done nothing. So, did you enjoy the list? Which was your favorite invention? Give your answer in the comments. Mine, because of my love for animals, I think was the Labradoodle. Yeah, yeah. Definitely the Labradoodle. Nice pooch. Well, well. That's it for now. As always, give this video a like or a dislike if you really have to and don't forget you can leave a comment if you have anything constructive to add and if you like my work and want to help the channel subscribe and hit the notification bell next video i'll be covering an entirely different short story i already have something in mind but is there a story you'd like to have me analyze instead which one Give that in the comments. I'll be waiting for you for another adventure. See you all then.